Hey, what's up guys? I want to show you a new knife. This one's uh, kind of unique, something different. Uh, this is more of a traditional style knife, uh, kind of old school, which is uh, it's nice to kind of you know break away from the new age tactical type knives and, and go back to some uh, traditional style knives. Um, the knife review is actually going to be on this one up top here, but first I want to show you uh, a smaller version of it and really the reason why I picked up the large one. Um, this knife here was sent to me by one of my viewers uh, a very long time ago. Uh, I believe he was from Japan, and this was um, uh, sent to me as a gift because he wanted to show me what his uh, people would use traditionally. And here's a knife right here. It's a very simple design. It's a solid piece of brass. It's actually folded over to make the handle, okay, and then you have the blade. And there's a little rivet here uh, by the pivot. And this is what's called a friction folder. Uh, similar to a slip joint in that there's no lock, the only difference is a slip joint, once the blade is open, the back spring kind of keeps it open a little bit um, so it doesn't fold as easily. Um, this one here, the tang is actually hammered out into a flat portion. Okay, and when the blades open, basically your grip and your thumb on top of that flat portion is what keeps the blade open. Okay, this won't fold because your thumb is pushing down on it. Um, so that's called, a, it's a friction folder is the design. But very unique little knife. It has a laminated stainless steel blade on it. Uh, very thick stock, traditionally. Not, I mean, not super thick, but it's obviously it's so small. Uh, but thicker than, you know, most knives of its kind. Um, and then it tapers down to a very, very shallow razor edge. Okay, and there's no, um, it's a, a, what's called, I guess, a zero grind, in that there's no secondary bevel on this. It's just, you know, sharpened from one point straight on down. Okay, and it's the same on both sides. So um, I thought this was really fascinating. Of course, I thanked him, you know, very much. I, I love stuff like this. It's, you know, looking into, uh, you know, historical type knives and what's traditionally used all around the world. Of course, there's some Japanese writing on here, but unfortunately, I can't read that. And as you can see, this one, I did use it quite a bit when I first got it. Um, the brass is tarnished a little bit. It's not as shiny. But it came with this nice little, you know, leather sheath here. Um, so having this knife, I was searching around uh, not too long ago, and one of the websites I like to go to every now and then is a website called um, World Knives. It's just simply worldknives.com, and they sell traditional knives from all different countries. And I believe right now they have something like 21 different countries uh, listed and all different knives from those countries. And they actually had the larger version of this knife, the full size. This is just a kind of novelty little pocket version of it. But this is what traditionally they would use, the full size. Um, now this one, obviously, there's more, came from Japan. There's no uh, English on here, except for made in Japan on the bottom. So unfortunately, I can't read any of this on the, the box. There is a telephone and fax number for the company here. If you guys are interested, it's 0794, I believe that's the area code, um, 82-0393. <laughs> Uh, but, you know, to be honest, I never called it. Maybe I should, but I guess I'd be embarrassed if, uh, if you know, they, obviously it's in Japan. They'll probably pick up and, and start talking Japanese, and uh, unfortunately I can't understand it. But, there, again, there's more writing in here, but I just have no idea what that says. Anyway, getting on to the knife. There's a little piece of plastic here. And here's the, uh, the larger version of it. This one's very cool. It's got a samurai on the front. Samurai warrior. And uh, again, more more Japanese writing on the back, which I just unfortunately cannot read. But um, exact same knife, same exact design, a simple folded over piece of brass, one solid piece for the handle. Again, push down on the, the top part of the tang here, and that will let the blade out. This one's a little stiff, uh, which is good. You don't want it loose because then the blade will kind of fall out when it's closed. Um, so you don't want it you know, somewhat stiff uh, to get out. Then once, once it's open, you can get a better uh, visual here because it's larger. You see the tang of the knife is hammered out and then flattened, kind of like a little tail. And when the knife is open completely, that rests against the frame. And then, of course, your thumb pushing down on it with your grip reinforces that blade uh, being open. Uh, interesting style blade, kind of like a, uh, a scimitar uh, sword or scimitar. I'm not sure how to pronounce that, but you, know, you guys have probably seen those before. Um, Really cool concept. I've, I think I've called this in the past a reverse tanto, in that you have the tanto um, kind of the 45 degree angle, but it's not your cutting edge. 
basically this reinforces the the tip as if it is a tanto blade uh, so you have the piercing power and again the reinforcement of that strong tip however your cutting edge is still that smooth uh, one line you know it's just a very slight uh, curvature on this blade as opposed to having you know if it's flipped around and this being your tanto having your cutting edge and secondary point and all that basically it's just kind of like a reverse tanto it's basically the the back part of a tanto sharpened but you, you do get the same benefits from a tanto blade but you still have that traditional uh, straight edge um, very cool again kind of a thick stock um, you know for its size which is great you know offers a lot of reinforcement you have that uh, this one here doesn't have the zero grind on it uh, you do have a secondary bevel as you can kind of see as the light glares off a little bit of a shine on that um, very slight though uh, very similar to a, a Scandinavian style blade in that the secondary bevel is extremely extremely shallow it makes for a very uh, razor sharp blade you can see the, the grind starts about midway down the blade let me get the light just like that so it's basically one grind down and then just very lightly touched up uh, on a secondary uh, angle or having a secondary bevel so it makes for a very sharp blade I got a you know, piece of paper here just give you a quick little test um, razor sharp as the knife should be for uh, for woodwork you know if you're using this for wood carving which traditionally it was you want a nice razor sharp blade I'll demonstrate that here I'll try to get one of my little curly cues I like doing that's really eh, too small for you to see I'll try to get something a little bit bigger here I don't know if you can even see that but razor razor sharp blade um, again very simple in construction but just really unique I, I love the fact that it is a traditional style knife that was used for who knows how many hundreds of years again another little Japanese marking here on the blade um, I'm not sure how great the detail is coming out on this but you know it would be really cool if someone who you know speaks in English and Japanese fluently if you can maybe interpret what you can see here it's going to be hard to see with the video quality but be interesting to find out what that says on there but um yeah, anyway it's just a really cool blade I believe the name of these are I don't want to butcher this in pronunciation but I think it's pronounced uh, Marioshi it's M-A-R-U-Y-S-O-S-H-I so again M-A-R-U-Y-O-S-H-I sorry I think I messed it up the first time <laughs> but I believe it's called Marioshi um, just really cool really just something different like I said breaking away from the new age fancy super super heavy duty locking tactical knives and going back to something a little more uh, traditional here so very cool if you guys are interested in this knife um, you can find this at worldknives.com uh, they have a lot of different cool knives there I might pick up some more in the future um, as far as this little one I have no idea where you can find this like I said this was sent to me as a gift um, but if you do want the large version uh, they have it in brass, and I think they have an aluminum version, too. Uh, what they're asking right now is uh, $32.95 for these, plus shipping. Um, and like I said, they have a whole whole bunch of different uh, different type traditional knives from all around the world. So, really cool. You know, if you're interested, check it out. Uh, I thank you again for watching a new knife video. Uh, I'm pumping them out. <laughs> I happen to have a little bit of time off here, so I'm trying to... Uh, you know go over some stuff actually this knife is not very new to me at all I've had this for weeks now and as well as some other stuff I just haven't gotten time to uh, you know to make the videos yet but I have a little time today and I'm, I'm glad to show you so thanks for watching I appreciate it as always and I hope you enjoy the rest of your day take care